Hello world, Deshaun Schwartz back at it again with another video. Today's topic is going to be, if I could go back to college today, what would I do differently and why? So college basketball is a different beast. It's a different animal and it's a different beast. If you know, you know, the Kobe and Kanye video. So not only are you 18 years old, 19 years old, up to 22 years old, something around there, you're figuring out how to adjust with being a young man leaving your parents home going to school and living away for the first time in your life and trying to learn how to deal with living on your own doing things like grocery shopping doing things like apartment shopping hunting doing things like cooking and cleaning on your own and nobody's there to save you it's it's your first taste of that i'll say you're also a student, so you have to deal with having three to four classes per day of heavy coursework, of taking notes, reviewing those notes, studying, getting ready for tests, as every college student does. Then you have study hall hours on top of that, which are mandatory by the team. So you have the young man aspect, you have the student aspect, you have the athlete aspect. And now this is where the bulk of the work comes in because as an athlete, you're going to be lifting, you're going to be watching film, you're going to be practicing, and you're going to be getting individual work in. So that's like four jobs in one. Then you tackle on the fact that you are a student on top of that. Then you tackle on that you're trying to have a social life on top of that. Then you're trying to develop and transition into young adulthood on top of that. So college is a mess of emotions. And it's just this big melting pot of experiences, hardship, adversity, and some of the best times of your life, to be completely honest, because you have a brotherhood, you have a safety net, and you don't have too many expectations on you. It's probably the last time you're going to be able to go out and act a fool and not have detrimental consequences for it. So the student-athlete life is basically, let's say, let's take it for the first semester at Colorado where we would practice in the mornings. So let's say we start about set, yeah, let's say we start about seven o'clock with film for 30 minutes. We're straight on to the court, practice for two and a half hours, something like that. And then you go and lift right after that. So that's about four hours of work. Sorry, don't don't take these numbers quite literally because I know how the NCAA will try to manipulate this and try to count, calculate the hours. It's, it's something like this, right? It's, it's something along, along the lines of film, long practice, a super long practice where you start with, look, coach, <laughs> hey, college is crazy, bro. Coach, Coach Boyle didn't believe in stretching, so we would just get straight to it. Like, we would get straight to it. Like, fresh out of the film room into the first drill. No no quad stretch, no hamstring stretch, no hip swing. You might get two hip swings before we got to bring it in. And um, <laughs> so, you, so you going in there cold, we getting straight to it. And then every, every drill, you get into the live drills. Every time you lose, you're running. 
So there's just a whole lot of running, especially in the preseason. You're running lines, you're running lines, you're running lines. So you're going to be in shape. It's going to be the best shape of your life. That's 100% sure. But you're also in peak exhaustion as well. So there's that. So by the time you get done with practice, you're going straight to the weight room to go lift. And you might have a hour or so lift, 45 minute lift. I don't know. But Coach Steve would get us right. Of course, you're going to be sore the next day because we're trying to build at this point. I put on maybe 15, 20 pounds in college. I came in at 215 and I walked out of there at about 235. Yeah, big body, big guard. And I was, I was, I was, I was in peak shape. 235, 230, something like that, 230, 235 at 7% body fat. So we we getting it in. We getting it in. Protein shakes fresh after the after the lift. You got breakfast there at the at the arena. Boom, you get changed, go put on your clothes, and then you walk in straight to class. At this point, it's probably I don't know, you have your first class at either eleven or ten thirty, something like that. And you're walking across campus. You might have a bike at this time. You gotta walk, you gotta bike, you gotta do all this madness just to get to class. You might still be sweaty. Sometimes sometimes you might get out of practice late or you just like exhausted, feel sorry for yourself. So you're sitting in your locker for a while and you're going to be late to class or you're going to be sweaty in class because you still didn't have time to really take the intricate shower that you really wanted to. Like, you know, college is a battle. It's, it's an uphill battle at all times. So then you go into class and you're in class trying not to fall asleep. You're taking your notes. You're trying to lock in, but you can't really lock in because you're so exhausted. And then you get out of class. You might go get something to eat. Look, Colorado, I'm not going to lie. Colorado, there was no food shortages. And you had ample options, right? Freshman year, you had the – you had – you had the the snack centers at the dorms. You had the C4C, which is basically the cafeteria. Anybody could go in to eat there. If you're a freshman, you got meal swipes. You go in and get the meal swipes. Meal swipes is fire probably for about the first two months. But after those two months, you don't you don't want to eat there ever again. So, boom, you got those options. Then we had the student athlete hall where you just go in and they have fire meals. Some of our teammates didn't eat those, but I was all in. They had the salmon. They had the good veggies. They had... They had wings sometimes. They had burgers sometimes. It was fire. And now, now since Prime got in, they started putting a little bit more coverage on it. But we 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 had it popping too when we were there too. So you had options to eat there. Boom, and then you might have another class. You go to class, and then say you're done with class about four. So <laughs> so really, you you just work from seven to four, and then on top of that, you have homework. So, boom, you got to get your homework done. You might have study hall hours. If you are a good student, you'll only have study hall for maybe the first two semesters. But when you're a freshman, you have mandatory, I don't know how many hours it was, but it, it calculated to something like one or two hours a day. And then you have mandatory study hall for the team on Sunday for two hours every Sunday, two to four. I'll never forget it. I'm probably still conditioned to have study hall from two to four on a Sunday, but that's all right. That's, that's, that's the life of an athlete. So really you go from seven to five and then you finally get your free time at five o'clock. Then you got to go eat something. Then it's really six o'clock. Now do you want to go get some extra work in? You got to go get some extra shots up because you know, you're not playing as a freshman. So you're going to go get some extra shots up by then at seven 30 Boom, you just had a 7 to 7.30 day. Now you got to go get your social life in. You go do what you got to do, blah, blah, blah. Try to get in bed by a decent hour. Let's say you get in bed by 10, 30, 11. Boom, you get, <laughs> you get seven hours of sleep. And then you right back at it again every single day. That's the grind of college. It's no joke. It's not a joke. It's no games. Nothing's being played around. And that's it. That's that. So... That's college. If I were to do it over again, I think I would approach it as a pro. And this is a hindsight 2020 
moment because I'm a pro now. At the time, it's kind of a toss up. You don't know how your career is going to end. So you don't know how to approach it. Right. But I took my studies very seriously and I happened to be in a top 20 business school in the country. So my schoolwork was no joke. I studied marketing at University of Colorado Lead School of Business, which is a no-joke program. I would say marketing is probably on the lower end of like the business school stuff, so to speak. It's not it's not as hard as information technology or I would say marketing and entrepreneurship aren't as bad as finance, accounting, and information technology. So I was at least on the lower end of that spectrum. But it's still tough. Like we had this thing called the mods where you had to take basically eight, eight courses within a semester. So you had a mini semester of four courses. You, you cut the semester into fourths where you have four classes in the first, first half, four classes in the second first half. And then you had two more and that's just in the first, that's just in the first semester. So it was, it was a grind. If I were to go back and do it again, I probably would have studied some something a lot easier and just focused on hoops. Because if you're trying to do both, if you're really trying to do the school grind and the hoop grind, you're going to go mentally insane. You're going to get exhausted. And that's where I was a lot of the time, especially my sophomore year. Bro, I was ready to I was ready to mail it in. I was ready to mail it in. Yeah, because once once those mods came around and I had I have I basically had double the classes because we had more classes at the time. So I'm I'm just like going full speed trying to learn accounting, finance, entrepreneurship and marketing all in one semester with a couple extra classes. And that's the thing they don't tell you. When you when you get some elective courses, let's say you let's say you get theater for your elective course. The elective course dang near has more work than your major courses and is and you don't even need it to graduate. So you out here doing extra work for no reason. You got to meet with groups and stuff like that. It's just a whole mess. So if I were to do it again, knowing what I know now, being a pro, I would have approached it from a pro standpoint and not focus so much on my studies. Maybe either do less work and, and finish school with a lower GPA or just pick a whole different major entirely. That way I could focus on my sport because it's it's. It's possible to do both, but it's really, really difficult. So that's one thing. The second thing, I would have made my diet a more priority in college. Because when I came into college, this is my first time getting away from my parents and like making my own choices. So I was like, all right, cool. I watched What the Health and I was like, yeah, I'm going vegan. I'm doing it overnight, cold turkey. Boom. So I end up going vegan, but I didn't do enough research. So really, I'm just carb loading at all times. Like I'm eating a lot of pasta. I'm eating a lot of rice. I'm eating a lot of bread. And what I wasn't understanding, I was having so many I was having so many stomach problems when I went from vegan to not vegan because my food intolerances, I was mixing all these different foods. Of course, I didn't know about trophology back then, which is the study of food combining. And if I would have known a lot more of that stuff, I think I would have been better prepared as it pertained to the weight room, as it pertained to recovery, as it pertains to post games and stuff like that. Like you you have no shortage of food in college, but you also have so many options. So it's really easy to dial in on a program that you really want to do that works for you and works for you specifically. Like for example, when we would charter to our games, like say we're going to play Arizona on a Thursday, we would charter on Wednesday, and on the flight we got Chick Fil A. Like we <laughs> we got two chicken sandwiches with the chips with the cookie. The cookie used to go stupid. That John was it was soft. It was soft on the inside, but it was crispy on the outside, and it would be underneath the sandwiches, which were hot. So it would have a little bit of the melted chocolate on there. It used to go crazy. I ain't going to lie. And then once you land, boom, you just had two Chick-fil-A sandwiches. You go to shoot around or practice or whatever. And then that night we would go to California Pizza Kitchen, the Cheesecake Factory. And 
you already know you're running up to check. You're getting an appetizer. You're getting a main. You're getting all that. You're getting, you're getting dessert if you win. So you, there's no f- shortage of food. But if I were to do it all over again, I wouldn't be eating Chick-fil-A on the plane because that just sits in your system. You don't want to eat heavy carbs before you get on a flight because once you get up in the air, there's something about your glucose level where it just makes it tough to digest. And then you're constipated because you're traveling so much and you're off your schedule. So I would have I would have went vegan because I'm vegan now, but I would have went vegan at the time and I would have stuck to it all four years. But I would have put a lot more attention on what I was eating, not just not eating meats and cheese because I thought that was the right thing to do. Like, no, I need to eat more plant-based. I need to have vegetables. I need to have good carbohydrates, the sweet potatoes, the potatoes, the green beans, heavy greens. I would have had so many more smoothies coming up. I would have just took it in full throttle because that having recovery and having good sleep as a college student is imperative. And I never had that. I never had good nights of sleep because I would stay up all night and here's my number three. My number three is I would have tried to make sleep more of a priority. Sleep is like the enemy of college because you figure when you're working from seven to seven, those four hours, they call it they call it revenge consumption. When you're trying to get revenge for all the time you lost during the day and you're just scrolling or you're you're watching movies or you're binging on something. That's what you do when your entire day is consumed. So I understand and I and I reason with people who have this trouble as adults when they come home from their job and they're just like staying up all up all night and they're on the hamster wheel and they can't get off of it because it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. So I get it. But I would have made sure sleep was a priority. I downloaded this app called Sleep Cycle and I've been using it since I think my junior year in college and it's really just helped me understand how much I sleep, what sleep quality is, how I can have better sleep quality, all this kind of stuff. But there's a bunch of stuff I know now that I didn't know then. And obviously you can't do it. Hindsight is 2020. So hopefully this video goes to somebody who's in college right now and can learn from my mistakes. So you don't make these same mistakes. And I say that because you're building a lot of your habits in college in your early 20s. So thankfully, I started the habit of investing in college. I started an Acorns account my freshman year, and I wasn't putting anything in there, bro. <laughs> I guess it's a little bit different now with NIL, but student athletes are just as broke as the rest of college kids. Like every college kid is broke. And that's part of what makes college dope is because like we're all just broke college students trying to figure it out. <laughs> So I was putting like something super small, like $5 a week or $15 a week in my Acorns account. And then anything else for my stipend, I was just spending on trying to get some clothes or something. You you know, you're trying to get fly for the girls and for the parties in college and stuff like that. So I wouldn't change my spending habits at all. I saved a lot of my bread from college. You should, when you leave college, you should come up on a lot of bread, especially if you're an athlete, because you get your stipend, you have to pay some of it for rent, but the rest of that money you can you can spend on groceries or going out or whatever, whatever. But if you get per diem, say you go and play in a tournament in Vegas or you play in a tournament in Hawaii or something like that, stash that bread, bro. If you get 500, if you get 1,000, For your Christmas break, stash that. Don't touch it because you already have your stipend. So use your stipend. Act like that other money didn't exist. Put that away. Either save it or go put it in an account and invest it. You have to do it. You have to do it because you got to leave college with some bread. If you don't, you're going to be asking your agent for a loan and you're going to be asking them for a place to live and then you're going to have to back pay that money. Don't do that. So save your bread. And that's what I did. I saved my bread and I won the three on three, came up on some bread. And I didn't have to ask nobody for no money when I came out of college. Make sure you save your bread. So on that account, have a little fun, but make sure you leave college with a little bit of bread. And another thing I would be, and this is, I think this is the number one takeaway. And the older I get, the more I understand how important film is. But 
I noticed that there are guys that go and watch film with their coaches and guys that were too scared to watch film with their coaches, right? Me, I was the second guy. I was scared to watch film with my coaches because I didn't want to face the madness, especially my first couple years. First couple years, the coach is going to force you to come in and watch. But, like, you're so bad. <laughs> you're so bad as a freshman. You don't know anything. You're just trying to learn the ropes as quickly as possible, and you're thinking so much the whole time. So you're making so many mistakes at one time. It's, you have to go watch film. So if I would say, <clears throat> yes, definitely get your shots up, get your reps in. But if you want to prioritize one of the two, especially as a young player, go watch film with your coaches because, A, you're going to be learning the game. You're going to be getting your mental reps. And B, you're there with your coach. They're thinking out loud, and you're just going to get all the wisdom you can from them. And C, having those hours with your coach puts confidence in you. So if your coach knows and your head coach is walking by, see you in the film room every single day with your coach, he's going to have more confidence in you that when you make mistakes or – when he does put you in this situation, he's going to have confidence that you know what you're doing because you've been in there putting in the hours and the mental reps. So definitely do that. That's something I wish I would have done a lot more of because especially as a pro, you need to know schemes. You need to know tactics. You need to know rotations. And the quicker you can pick up on that, the more it's going to open up your game offensively, defensively, and when you're thinking the game and you can teach the game and you can help mentor younger players under you. You can't mentor anybody until you learn for yourself. So you got to continually learn and keep learning from the coaches. Man, <clears throat> if there's one thing I know about college coaches is they love, love, especially like there's, there's at least one or two coaches that are just junkies. Like they'll stay in and watch practice one, two, three, four times over. Coach Rome probably watching film right now. I'll put $1,000 on it. Coach Felton from George Mason, he's at Providence now. I guarantee he's watching film right now. There's just film junkies, and they love basketball. Any questions you have, go ask those coaches. Let them pour into you. That's what they're there for. That's what they love to do. That's their job. They enjoy it, I promise. So anytime you have a question, anytime you want to watch the film, Hey, you might get your feelings hurt. You might have your pride and your ego shot a couple times, but that's what you need, especially the earlier you can do it. That means you can learn from your mistakes quicker and quicker. So definitely do that. I'm trying to think if there's anything else while I'm here on this subject. I get really passionate about college basketball because it's a good time. Um, and also, all right, this is the last thing. This is the last thing. Definitely cherish... Definitely cherish these moments and these bonds with your college teammates. I'm going to sit up for this one. You know, the, you know the meme where the guy locks into the game and he, like, starts sitting forward so he can start, start winning the game? This is why I lean forward. If there's nothing else you take away from this video, take away this. Embrace and don't ever forget the importance of the brotherhood in college. You will never, ever, 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 ever ever have a family brotherhood the way you will in college once you get to the pros it's about your numbers your performance and how you're going to move forward in your career in college it's about the team it's about your friends it's about your guy it's about the guy next to you in your locker you came up for four years together you guys came in as a recruiting class you guys built something together you you guys have made memories. You guys went out to eat. You guys have all these stories and laughs and jokes and everything. It's never going to be like that ever again. So just cherish those moments. And those those bonds are going to last you for a lifetime. But don't forget how conditional things are. Because when you, le when you see somebody every day, you take it for granted. Once you, once you stop seeing them every day, you guys will talk occasionally, especially the ones you were really close with, but it, it won't be the same because of the conditions that were behind it. And you just building that foundation of a brotherhood. Like I said, there's no other word that I can describe it, especially at Colorado. It's just that brotherhood of you knowing that these are your guys and you're going to compete with them every single night. 
You guys have been to adversity together. You guys have created a culture. You guys have helped younger people. You guys have helped create a community of fans. And there's just the utmost love and respect for each other. Do not lose that and do not forget that in the moment because it is one of the most profound experiences that I hope every single player gets to feel, especially if you are in a winning culture and on winning teams where you get to win and you get to see yourself progress as as a team, do not forget it. And do not do not hesitate to thank your coaches any chance you get, your coaches, your academic advisors, anybody who's helping you through the process, do not hesitate to thank them because they're in service to you. And so they just want you to succeed. And sometimes it seems personal. Sometimes it seems like they're going at you as they're just trying to shoot your ego down or shoot your pride down. They're they're trying to do what's best for you. They want you to be better. They want you to be better so everybody can be better. And so, yeah, just just take that serious and enjoy each of those moments because it's not going to be the same. And it, it will be good. It'll be great, but it won't be the same. And so just appreciate that while you're in it. So those are my – that's a breakdown of how college basketball is and also what I would do differently if I was a college athlete now. So Deshaun Schwartz out. I hope you all got something from that word. I'm out.